first Americans were Europeans who came to the new world in search of liberty. In the dangerous days of the revolution, these people of many races and many creeds, long oppressed in their own native lands, dedicated their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to the creation of a free America. In September 1776, in an abandoned loft on the New York waterfront, the Sons of Liberty met in secret council. Alexander McDougall, a patriot with a price on his head, proposed a candidate for membership. We came over on the same ship together four years ago. And during that long voyage, we discussed each other's thoughts and our hopes for the new country. And for that reason, gentlemen, I can readily vouch for Hyam Song. But would you mind if I ask you a question? No, not at all. Why did you come to America? Persecution and intolerance drove my family into exile. From Spain to Portugal, from Portugal to Germany, and from there into Poland, where I was born. I came to America in search of liberty. I found it here. And now that that liberty is threatened, I want to join those who are fighting to secure it. We're honored to have you with us, Tom. British transports have just passed Sandy Hook. That means General Howe will soon take possession of New York. In that case, gentlemen, I suggest we give him a very, very warm reception. On September 20th, 1776, General Howe occupied New York. His reception was indeed a warm one. For the city he entered blazed an ominous warning that the torch of American liberty flamed ever higher. Look at that. That's a great blow for the cause. It'll be even greater if the flames had reached their ammunition and supply ships. Arrest all suspicious characters. I'm in this boat! You'd better get on while you can. Yeah. If we can just get across the river to Jersey. Will you go, MacDougall. I'll stay here. But, man, you'll be safer with the Continental Army. I know. General Washington needs men here in New York to watch the British. Well, that he may be in no best. I'll be going. And bless you. Bless you, MacDougall. What are you doing here? We're watching the fire. Anything wrong? Yes, you. Come on, bring him along. I am Sullivan. You are charged with being an active member of a rebel organization known as the Sons of Liberty, of aiding and abetting the enemies of the Crown, of assisting said enemies in the wanton destruction of stores intended for the British forces. What have you to say for yourself? Nothing. Where is Alexander McDougall, the leader of the Sons of Liberty? I don't know. Oh, come now, Mr. Salem. You're a man of intelligence, a man of business. What have you in common with these rebels? A love for liberty, a yearning for freedom and equality. Never mind that. The right to say what we please, the right to worship as we please. Take him to Provo prison. That may change his mind. Time Solomon remained in prison under sentence to be hanged. Being a master of languages, his life was spared and he was made an interpreter at British headquarters. While acting in his new capacity, he became a spy for General Washington and aided many American prisoners to escape. One night, a year later, in the home of Heim Solomon. Heim, dear, it's very late. You can do that tomorrow. You must get some rest. Not yet, my dear. Unless this information gets to General Washington before the morning, and to cost the lives of hundreds of our soldiers. I'm, I'm afraid. Afraid for you and for the children. Why don't we go to Philadelphia? You're risking your life every day we stay here. Rachel, brought into the metal of the Liberty Bell are the words, Proclaim liberty throughout the land unto the inhabitants thereof. Not until that has been done will my work be finished. Hi. Where are you?
They're lost. What is it? The British know by spying. They know everything. They've arrested McDougal. McDougal? Yes. And the Provo Guard is right at my heels. Both the door, Rachel. Yes. Get this letter to General Washington. You'll find him encamped on the main road to Princeton. Now help me with this table. But Jaime, it's useless. The neighborhood is full of soldiers. Full of an army. Open this door in the name of the Crown. Out of the tunnel. It will lead you to the river. I'll never get through, Jaime. You must. Open this door in the name of the Crown. this house. Where is he? Oh, you must be mistaken, Sergeant. Your lies won't save him. Come on, clear this place. Sergeant, look at this. There's a tunnel down here, Sergeant. Our man got away. You hang. No! I no no! I think you're another spy that's been put here to get evidence against us. He's all right. I know him. Don't you remember me, Heim? I was your neighbor. Jacob. We wondered what had become of you. I've been writing here for six months. But in a few hours, the soldiers will free me. <laughs> With their rifles. Hi. Have you got a Bible with you? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Jacob. Not for me. It's for a young fellow condemned as a spy. He's a good Christian lad and needs a bit of comfort. He's asked the guard for a Bible. They ignore him. So I thought, perhaps I can help him, Jacob. This is my friend. He wants to help you. Oh, do you by any chance remember the 23rd Psalm? I learned it as a child, but now I... The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What is your name, young man? Nathan Hale. Solomon was to be hanged, he escaped and made his way to Philadelphia. Seventeen eighty one, three years of bitter reverses, and George Washington still fought on against tremendous odds. Many of our troops are so nearly naked that they cannot leave their quarters. Even my officers are in such dire distress. For the... Colonel Silver, Mr. Robert Morris. Sir. Ah. I'm glad to see you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. We have bad news, sir. Yes? The militia are deserting in hundreds and marching to Philadelphia to lay their claims before Congress. They say that if money isn't raised to pay them, feed them, and clothe them properly, they'll lay down their arms and surrender to the enemy. Harsh measures are needed, sir. Not harsh measures. But money is needed most of all. I was just writing an appeal to Congress. Congress with an empty treasury. It must be replenished. As superintendent of finance, I can assure you, General Washington, that I have exhausted every possible source of revenue. We're living in times of sacrifice, Mr. Morris. Those patriots who've given before must give again. Colonel Tillman. Sir. Make ready to ride at once to Philadelphia. I want you to deliver a message to I'm Solomon.
Mr. Heim Salomon here. Yes, but the holy. I'm service. sorry, but I must see him. General Washington's ordered. Tillman. Mr. Salem. What is it? Why are you here? I have an important message from General Washington. Will you open it, please? Hi. Have you forgotten that this is the eve of atonement? I'm sorry, Rabbi, but this is very urgent. This is of greater urgency than our holy service. Forgive me, Rabbi, but this gentleman brings a message from General Washington. Washington? Yes, Rabbi. May I speak to the congregation? An appeal from General Washington must be heeded. God will forgive us. My friends, the struggle for our independence is in danger of being lost. General Washington has no money, food or clothing for his ragged army. He has asked us to help him raise the $400,000 he so badly needs. I know that you've given, even beyond your means, but now we must give again. It isn't charity, I ask. It's an offering to the cause of liberty, a cause sacred to us above all others, because centuries of bitter persecution have taught us the value of liberty. If we want to continue living as free men in a free land, if we want to bequeath to our children this priceless heritage, then we must give. It is not our duty to leave wealth to our children. It is our duty to leave them liberty. I... I can raise 10,000 on my store. You can have that, Mr. Solomon. It is too much, Mr. Lyons. You have already given two sons. Yes. But I want to be sure they did not die in vain. I'll sell my crops. That will bring at least 6,000. 6,000? be added to the arm you left at Brandywine. Time. I can raise 1,000. Mr. Solomon, I still have $400 of the money my husband left me. If you give that to General Washington, how will you live? Never mind. God will take care of me. Rich and poor of every faith and creed contributed to Heim Solomon to aid this great cause. That makes a total of... $368,500. Still leaves us a bit shy. How much did our fees come to on that last shipment of Virginia tobacco? $35,000. Apply that to make up the necessary amount. Very good, sir. We must get the money to General Washington's headquarters at once. Mr. Morris has arranged for a military escort to accompany us. I don't know how we're going to keep going after we've used up this money. Washington prolongs his campaign against Cornwallis beyond reason. Sometimes I think he's too cautious. We mustn't lose faith in him, Mr. Morris. General Washington's going to win. One day, America will appreciate his suffering and his courage. But the Hessians learned of the shipment of gold and planned to seize it. Have you seen them? Yes, Captain. They're following the Mill Road, not half a mile from here. And the escort? Not more than ten men, sir. They have the money with them. I saw the chest with my own eyes. Good work. Boy. Look out, sir. A troop of British cavalry. We're outnumbered three to one. What's the trouble, Colonel? British cavalry about to attack, sir. We'll have to run for it. Get up! You... Washington had foreseen such an attack and sent troops to the rescue. The day was saved, but darker days were to follow. 
defeat dogged the steps of Washington's ragged army, but he did not despair. In one last desperate attempt, he planned to trap the victorious troops of Lord Cornwallis at Yorktown. Here, here! Cornwallis surrendered to Washington in Yorktown! <laughs> Then in Philadelphia on the Saturday in 1785, I prepared some of the broth the doctor ordered for you. Thank you, my dear. Mr. Solomon. You've sent a memorandum of your government securities from the Treasury office. I've looked it over very carefully, and it's quite correct. They want you to sign it at once. Not today, McGray. It's fine. But, sir, if you'll just sign it, we may get a payment on the day. Angus, the Lord rested on the seventh day. You forget it is the Sabbath. I, I know that, sir, but we're so pressed for funds in the business. And besides, you'll need money for your doctors and your household expenses. Oh, my dear. Tell them to bring it back to me on Monday. But those years of sacrifice to the cause of freedom had taken their toll. And when Monday came... It's no use. I'm afraid he won't be able to sign anything today. <laughs> Rachel. Oh, my dear. Rachel. Forgive me if I've divided my love. I'm a dog. I have been faithful to you and to my country. I'm sorry I leave you nothing of material worth. But I do leave you a sacred trust raise our children to be good Americans. <laughs> we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Gentlemen of the Congress, on Thursday died our friend, Haim Solomon, a patriot. He was indeed our friend. With a generous hand, he cast his entire fortune to a cause in which we believe. He gave us his all and died almost penniless. The debt we owe him is so great that we can never hope to repay him. But if we zealously guard and keep inviolate the liberty, the equality, those basic human rights that he fought with us to establish. And Haim Solomon, our little friend from Front Street, will feel that his great sacrifice was not in vain. La semaine prochaine, le cinéma de minuit vous invitera à suivre le dernier film du cycle consacré à Michael Curtis, Le Vaisseau Fantôme avec Edward G. Robinson, Ida Lupino et John Garfield.